Water Resources Introduction to the Chapter We all know that water is a renewable resource. It is essential for domestic use, cultivation and also for industries. The majority of human uses require fresh water. 97% of the water on earth is salty water and only 2.5% of the total water on the earth exists as fresh water. Around 70% of fresh water is frozen in glaciers and ice sheets. Only 30% of water is stored as ground water. The source of almost all fresh water is precipitation. India receives nearly 4% of the global precipitation. Around 0.3% of total fresh water exists in rivers, lakes, streams, ponds and springs are natural sources of water. India has ample water resources in certain regions. Still India is 133rd position in water availability per person per year. The total renewable water resources in India are estimated at 1897 square kilometers per annum. It is predicted that large parts of India will join regions with absolute water scarcity by 2025 which is posing an alarming threat in most parts of the world including India. Water scarcity. Here we can see the water scarcity in different parts of the country. Dry regions, people standing in queue for water. First let us learn the definition of water scarcity. Water scarcity is the lack of sufficient available water resources to meet the demands of water usage within a region. Overexploitation of water, excessive use and unequal access to water among different social groups are the main causes of water scarcity. The increase in water demand is a contribution of various factors including growing population, increased agricultural need, industrial use and for electricity production. Large amounts of industrial pollutants dumped in the rivers are responsible for destroying and leading to water storage of the whole planet. Large scale deforestation has disturbed the natural recharge of groundwater at many places. Construction of concrete buildings, factories and roads has also made the ground less impervious to rainwater. This has almost totally stopped the percolation of rainwater to recharge groundwater. Pesticides and fertilizers used in agriculture also get mixed with water bodies and pollute them. Large scale farming also needs lot of water for irrigation. Overuse of tube wells for irrigation and use of bore wells for domestic use also leads to over exploitation of underground water, decreasing the level water table resulting in water scarcity. Sewage and effluents are being discharged into rivers and ponds without being treated. This has turned most of the rivers into filthy drains. The problem of water waste is severe in countries where people are using the traditional inefficient irrigation methods for agricultural land. Government should invest to build more dams to fulfill the water demand and reduce the water storage. Multipurpose river projects and integrated water resources management. Let us learn about them. People have always felt the need to store river water in the rainy season for the use in the dry season. People in ancient India built many hydraulic structures like dams, artificial lakes, tanks and canals to store water and divert water for irrigation. What is a dam and how is it useful for storing water? A dam is a structure that forms a barrier across a river to regulate the flow of water. Dams can be classified into several types based on the height and material used for construction. We have built many large dams across major rivers in India. The primary purpose of dams have always been to provide water for irrigation. Modern dams are also used to generate electricity and to supply water to industries and households. Dams are used to control flooding in flood prone areas by regulating the flow of water downstream. For example, the Hirakut project in the Mahanadi Basin integrates conservation of water with flood control.
This is the Hirakud Dam, dam in the Mahanadi Basin. The reservoirs created behind several dams are used for breeding fish. Dams can also be used to divert water into existing smaller streams to promote inland navigation. Several dams are popular tourist attractions and recreation spots. Dams are multipurpose river projects due to many ways that they offer to manage our water resources. A dam creates an enormous reservoir of water that submerges vast stretches of the surrounding area. But dams also have their drawbacks. Major benefits of large multipurpose projects go to big landowners and industrialists while the local poor, landless people have little to gain. Better irrigation facilities attract farmers to grow more water-intensive commercial crops leading to over-irrigation and increase in soil salinity. Construction of dams cause ecological problems as well like these block the migration of fish, upsetting the ecological balance and putting several aquatic species in danger. The sudden release of large quantities of water from dams results in large-scale flooding in plain areas. Large dams obstruct the free flow of river water resulting in disputes between different states or water sharing and also over the sharing of costs and benefits of the project. Due to these reasons, many movement groups have begun protesting against building of large dams. For example, Narmada Bachao Andolan is an example of one such movement. Environmentalists associate large dams with causing of earthquakes, spread of waterborne diseases and degradation of soil. Most of the multipurpose river projects in India so far have not met their desired objectives. Here is a map which shows major rivers and dams in India. Now let's learn what is rainwater harvesting. Rainwater feeds the rivers and seeps into the ground to recharge our underground water resources. Rainwater is one of the purest forms of water available in nature but is available to us only for a few months in a year. The process of collecting rainwater during the wet season to meet our fresh water requirements in the dry season is called rainwater harvesting. In Himachal Pradesh and Jammu, rainwater is harvested using diversion channels called kuls or guls. Water flowing through the kuls is collected in reservoir tanks in the villages and used for irrigation as and when required. Kul water harvesting is done in this way in Himachal Pradesh and Jammu. Farmers in Bengal traditionally use inundation channels cut through river embankments at times of floods to irrigate their fields. In some areas of Rajasthan, earthen embankments called khardin are built around farms to collect rain water during the rainy season. This saturates the soil for cultivation. In the semi-arid regions of Rajasthan, earthen chick dams called Johards are used to collect rainwater that percolates into the ground, raising the level of groundwater. One of the most widely used methods of collecting rainwater is rooftop rainwater harvesting. In a rooftop rainwater harvesting system, rainwater falling on the roof is collected and then filtered before being stored in tanks for immediate use. Excess water is diverted to wells to recharge groundwater. In this way, rooftop rainwater harvesting is done. The rainwater is passed through filtration tank and then to storage and percolation tank and the excess water to recharge groundwater. In many parts of Rajasthan, rainwater collected through rooftop harvesting is collected in large underground reservoirs called tankas. Almost all households in Shillong in Meghalaya use rooftop rainwater harvesting to meet almost 20% of the total requirement of water. Here is a large underground reservoir called Tanka which is common in Rajasthan. Each of the 200 households in Gendathur, Karnataka that adopted rooftop rainwater harvesting can collect 50,000 litres of rainwater every year for its use. In bamboo drip irrigation, bamboos are split to make shallow channels. A complex network of such bamboo channels is used to divert and carry water from rain-fed springs to the farm. Channel sections 
in the farm allow the water to drip near the roots of the plants now let's learn about the bamboo drip irrigation system in meghalaya which is one of the seven northeastern states in india an ingenious system of tapping of stream and spring water by using bamboo pipes to irrigate plantations is widely prevalent it is so perfected that about 18 to 20 liters of water entering the bamboo pipe system per minute gets transported over several hundred meters and finally gets reduced to 20 to 80 drops per minute at the site of the plant the tribal farmers of khasi and jentia hills use the 200 year old system the bamboo drip irrigation system is normally used to irrigate the beetle leaf or black pepper crops planted in erica net orchards or in mixed orchards Bamboo pipes are used to divert perennial springs on the hilltops to the lower reaches by gravity. Here we can see how bamboo pipes are used to divert perennial springs on the hilltops to the lower reaches by gravity. The channel sections made of bamboo divert and convey water to the plot side where it is distributed without leakage into branches again made and laid out with different forms of bamboo pipes. Manipulating the intake pipe positions also controls the flow of water into the lateral pipes this is how the sections are diverted if the pipes pass a road they are taken above the land this way they are taken above the land reduced channel sections and diversion units are used at the last stage of water application the last channel section enables the water to be dropped near the roots of the plant water resources let's quickly view the chapter 97% of water on the earth is salt water and only 2.5% is fresh water. Scarcity of water, multipurpose river projects and integrated water resources management. This is Hirakud Dam. A dam is a structure that forms a barrier across a river to regulate the flow of water. A map showing major rivers and dams in India. Rainwater harvesting. water harvesting which is done in jammu here we can see rooftop rain water harvesting how it is done a tanka which is common in rajasthan bamboo drip irrigation method this is how the system is done to provide water for irrigation i hope the chapter water resources is clear